Hello, my name is Steve and I test anchors. Now in a recent anchor test of this 45 pound Rockna anchor, I showed that it had some trouble with seabed fouling and I also found that this shank is a little bit bent and I wasn't able to determine if this shank was made from a lesser grade of metal than some of the other uh, Rocknas that were produced or that perhaps this shank was made out of plate that was just bent to begin with. So I did get permission from the owner of this anchor to do whatever I want to in the name of science. So in this video we're going to do two things. I'm going to try and straighten this shank out and then I'm going to drill some holes in the fluke and get it out of the water and test it. See if I can't uh, improve the anchor. Alright, let's get to it. No change. Okay, now we're ten and a half feet. Okay, we're starting to bend my pry bar. And the shank is not bending. No change. No change. Twelve feet. Seventeen and a half feet. Nothing. No change. I give up. Well, in that epic battle, I have to concede. The Rockknath shank won hands down. That is, that is an extremely strong piece of metal. We still don't know what grade it is, but if this is somehow the lesser grade of metal that was used for these anchors, then the better grade is just ridiculous. That, that's far more than anybody would ever need. This, this is very strong. Now, the question is, is um, why is it bent? It didn't bend in the field, it had to have been manufactured this way. And you know, if I was the guy welding this shank on, I would have affixed the, sh the fluke into my jig or whatever, get, it, get its geometric center lined up. And rather than line up the geometric center of the shank base, I would have rather lined up the chain attach point with my center line. And I can tell you, if I do all this, I'm sighting along the edge of my bench tell you with absolute certainty that the chain attach point is not on the center line. It is deflected probably, I don't know, almost an inch. It's actually more than the amount of curvature in the shank itself. So again, the person or, or machinery that was aligning this before welding, it didn't appear that it was paying attention to the, the tip of the shank out here. It's, it's clearly off to the side. Do I think it matters? 
very, very little. Um, I, think, I think all we can really say is that if the anchor's on this side, the, the, the anchor will be tipped a little more than when it's on this side. Is that really going to matter? I don't think so. Here's a coincidence. This is a Rockna roll bar anchor. This is a Rockna Vulcan anchor. It has the only other shank that I have seen that is also not straight. I'm going to move the camera over here. Get it down to where you can see. And maybe just in that view you can tell that this shank is tipped to the right. And let me get my straight edge on there. It might make it more obvious. So I'll put the level on. And I've lined it up geometrically at 90 degrees to the center line of that anchor. And when I put the square on here, now it becomes real obvious. This anchor, just in the, in the six inches of this square, there is about a quarter inch of, of change here. So total height of the anchor, there's probably a good half inch, maybe more, of tip of that shank with respect to the to the fluke. I think this way they got it right. I don't see any problem with the chain attach point. I think it's right over the geometric center. They just simply didn't quite get that thing jigged up square. Again, I don't think it's a factor with a performance, but it does appear that the people who are welding up rock to anchors could do a little better job of aligning shanks to flukes. Okay, first test is at the sandy mud seabed, and it's the deep set test. I have edited out all of the incremental power adjustments I make, and we're looking now at the final power setting. It's 680 pounds of thrust, and the anchor in the unmodified condition drug at this thrust, and we see it's going to do the exact same thing. So there was no change. Once again, holes drilled in the anchor fluke made no change to the holding power of the anchor at 3.5 to 1 scope in this sandy mud seabed. Okay, there was a lot of weed on the anchor, some mud. I'm going to retest and try to find less weed. Alright, this is a repeat of that deep set test. Uh, we can see here I did find a nice spot that does not have any weed at all. N initial set was perfect. Once again, I've edited out all of the lower thrust settings. We're looking at just the max thrust, 680 pounds. Anchor had held firm up to that point, but then we see it takes off once again. So we're getting very consistent results. The anchor is incapable of holding 680 pounds at 3.5 to 1 scope in this sandy mud seabed. No mud where the holes are. Next test is the reset testing. We are in the same seabed, sandy mud. Same scope, 3.5 to 1, and this is where I drive the boat up and over at 3.5 knots to simulate a very aggressive wind or current reversal. Um, most of the modern and even 
Even some of the old-fashioned anchors can pass this test perfectly. This anchor cannot. Um, in the unmodified condition, it drug every single time, and it never even really hooked up and produced uh, any holding power, even if you let it come to a complete stop. And so with the holes here, it is still not capable of resetting. It will not bring the boat to a stop. If I let the boat stop, turn it around and pull in reverse, it will eventually uh, produce some holding power. So I'm going to say that holes in the fluke only improved the anchor, but did not... It certainly is, is not as good as, as virtually all the other modern anchors for this test. Uh, if you remember from the Manson Supreme mod, just drilling holes in the fluke cured it completely. For this seabed, it worked it worked 100%. So there's something else going on, and I'll keep investigating. Mud on the turned up edge. That might be a clue. Rock the mod with the holes and the turn down fluke. Okay, we're back at the sandy mud site, and this is the deep set test. Initial set is perfect. Once again, I've edited out all of the lower power thrust settings. We're just looking at the maximum thrust, 680 pounds. This is where it always suffered. After just a short period, it would take off dragging, but now the problem has been solved. The anchor is fully buried. I don't see any part of it. And holds the boat solid as a rock. No mud where the holes are. No bit mud back where those fluke palms or whatever we want to call these turned up things were. Nothing there now. Good. Held full power. Solid as a rock. A hole or two up here might be good, but that's going to make the toe here weak. Might break off. I purposely put the holes back here to take advantage of the strength that the shank provides to the fluke. So with that perfect deep set performance, I thought maybe I had it licked completely. So here we are with the reversal testing. 
I see weed around, so if it doesn't work, we might blame it on the weed, but look at that. That was a full stop. Within an anchor length, that, air, that anchor rotated and brought the boat to a halt. It's a 15,000 pound boat going three and a half knots up overhead, and these first two are perfect. Just, just, just what you want to see. But the next one drug further. That was quite a long drag. Unfortunately, the next reset also drugs. So at this point, I'm I'm convinced that there is still some mud fouling. I'll mention that the, the anchor is resetting eventually. When I bring the boat to a stop, turn it around, and pull in reverse, it does dig in and does stop the boat and, and, and produce some good holding power. So the anchor's improved, but it's not perfect. Okay, so I just got done drilling these three holes. This one, this one, and that one. You just saw the anchor underwater having trouble resetting with all those holes. And then on retrieval, we saw a couple times where we had a lump of seabed just right here, right there only. So in theory, this should, uh, that should make that lump of seabed not happen. And maybe, just maybe, the anchor will reset reliably. This is the modified Manson Supreme that I that I went through a couple years ago, and I just put these holes here as a guess, and that was all it needed. Just I didn't have to add holes. Uh, I never did play around covering holes after the fact, um, so maybe I just got lucky, or not sure. But I always thought that placing these last two holes near the end of the shank attach wasn't the strongest choice. You know, we're, we're, we're giving a place for this to bend. Um, now here at the Rockna, I've, I've made that even worse. I've put a hole way out here and, you know, tips do bend. Uh, I'm not so sure how malleable this cast metal is. Maybe it's gonna tend to break off right there. Um, I'm certainly not advocating that people weaken their anchors. Um, you're free to do whatever you want, but Make no mistake, I'm not intending this to be my anchor or a, you know, a full-strength, viable Rockna anchor. This is research time. I just want to figure out what's going on with this mud fouling. So um, don't, don't take my hole drilling as any sort of an endorsement or recommendation for you to do the same. So you drill your own holes at your own risk, and you take all the responsibility. All right, let's go see what this does on the water. Three more holes. Okay, we'll go straight to the reset testing. We're gonna assume that the deep set testing is still great. Initial set was perfect, and the first reset is perfect. That is just textbook. The anchor stayed engaged, rotated, and brought the boat to an immediate stop. Second reset, same story. Third reset took a little longer. That was maybe two or three anchor lengths. Still very, very good. And this fourth reset, this is a longer drag. 
I kept the power on and it did actually eventually stop the boat. Right there, it hooked in. I'm not going to call that a failure. That was just a little longer drag. And now we're back to perfection. That was just one anchor length reset. Didn't see much on that one, but from the sound we could tell that it did drag a bit and then, and then stop the boat. That one didn't take too long. That was maybe, I'm just going to guess, three or four anchor lengths. Perfectly acceptable. And when I say acceptable, there really is no standard for this. And I fully acknowledge that these 3.5 knot reversals are quite unrealistic. It certainly can happen, but it's certainly not going to happen very often, maybe once a lifetime. But I just think the test is a good indicator of an anchor's ability to, to, to reset under any circumstance where it may become dislodged. It's so obviously still a lot of weed around, so it is a bit unfair. The other anchors that I've tested in previous years, there just wasn't as much weed. Still a little mud there where these holes are. That hole is plugged. Yeah, the first three holes are plugged with mud. I don't know what that means. Okay, 45 pound Rockna, Scow Bay, and we're in the modified condition. All holes and the flattened fluke. Okay, we're now back at Scow Bay with the soft mud seabed. Pictures are quite a bit clearer than we saw with my big soft mud shootout from a couple weeks ago. In that shootout, this anchor held 500 pounds pretty solid, but then drug at the higher power setting. But now here in the modified condition, we're going to see that this anchor is brilliant. The pictures are good enough for us to see just how far this anchor moves, and in total, it's just, it's not far. I see that none of the chain is visible, and it indicates that the chain is well buried. Uh, the camera tether is attached about five feet away from the anchor. And we'll see here shortly that we get a case of the camera plunging downward into the seabed. That is a result of seabed sort of capturing the tether. It's another indication that the anchor is, is becoming extremely well buried. And it just shows how soft this substrate is for an eighth inch cord to just sort of cut the seabed like that tells me that the, at least the upper layers of the seabed are very, very soft. We can hear from the motion that the camera is moving through the substrate slowly. I think the motion of the anchor is very steady. It just keeps moving, just, the, just creeping along. But I still think it's, it's descending downward. Camera fortunately becomes unsnagged and comes back up, and we still see the anchors moving. We're at the max power now. We're 680 pounds, and it's just doing wonderful.
This is on retrieval. The mud that we're seeing is mud that is uh, dislodging from the chain. Didn't see any other anchor do that. I'll, I would give this anchor in this modified condition the top rating, but I believe the fortress anchor had stopped all of its motion during its pull. Okay, that is less mud than previously, and I believe it was buried deeper. And there's a lot of mud on the chain. So, so that's uh, three feet, golly. That's the most mud on any chain that I have tested here. Maybe eight feet. I did hold the full power longer, giving the chain more opportunity to sort of saw its way into the seabed. And we were moving, I believe. But that anchor was very, very well buried. Almost as much force required to retrieve it as the fortress anchor here which I believe was the highest force required of any anchor I've ever tested. So this was excellent. This anchor really penetrated well, very difficult to retrieve, obviously very well buried. Modified Rockna cobblestone. All right, we're back at my cobblestone seabed and in the big cobblestone shootout, this anchor held about 250 pounds. Now initially look up at the top of the anchor there, you'll see that the shackle is cocked off to the side. That is not straight. The chain is not in line with the rest of the anchor. And this might be the reason the anchor is not rotating upright. But initially, that's just, just what happens here. The anchor is on its side mostly. producing some holding power. At some point I cut the power and all that jostling around has straightened out the shank or the shackle with respect to the shank. And then I start bringing up the power again. So I'm up to 250 pounds now, and it I'm going to have to say it's not quite as good. I think it held a little bit firmer previously. It's pretty close, though. It might just be an anomaly. But we do see rocks passing through the anchor, passing right over where that turned-up edge used to be. It's possible that my flattening of the fluke has caused this anchor to hold just slightly less. I held that 250 pound thrust for quite a while. At some point toward the end, I increased the thrust and then it drags faster. So not a lot of change, just, a, just possibly a hair less holding because of the downturn fluke. Well, that was a whirlwind of modifications and research on this anchor. It all happened just a day or two before I hauled Panope for the winter. And because of this, um, I'm not going to be doing any more testing with this anchor or any of the other large anchors uh, in the water. Might end up with a beach test here at some point, but that's all I'm going to do to this Rockna. And I'd say that the mods certainly improved this anchor in the seabeds that I tested. Now, there's a infinite number of seabeds out there and there is the possibility that my mods 
uh, made it worse for some seabeds. I've, I've been thinking a lot about mud and anchors penetrating, and I'll talk a little bit about some of my theories. So here's what I think was going on with this anchor before I modified it. The anchor initially set perfectly, but at some point in its motion, the seabed directly over the anchor could no longer pass through. Uh, whether it was friction or stickiness, suction, um, we had a roll bar here that could grab part of it, and then these turned up flukes. I think that all conspired to cling or grab a hold of the seabed directly over the anchor, and then that seabed became part of the anchor and started moving with it. Now the transition between this blob of seabed here and the rest of the seabed was broken. Um, the seabed is a semi-solid in, in these two mud seabeds that I was testing, and there is at least some strength in the seabed itself. Once you've started moving the two with respect to each other, you've broken that bond, and holding power becomes much less, and I believe the front edge of the seabed, which is going to be turned up like this somewhat, it might actually be helping raise the anchor and lift it up out of the seabed and drag even more. And that was all improved by my mods I did, because I think what I did allowed the seabed to keep moving through. Now, there's a potential for another seabed where you might want it to stop moving, and maybe, maybe my mods made it worse. And here's, here's my theory. Say we've got a, a seabed that the anchor is diving down into, but at some point, no matter how much scope you have, chain will be laying up on the surface, and you, you can't pull it tight and straight. It, there'll be a curve to that chain. And the deeper the anchor goes, the steeper that part of the chain will be at the connecting point. The tendency will then to, to tip the anchor farther upward. So in short, the deeper it goes downward, as it goes deeper and deeper, it's probably going to end up flatter and flatter. At some point, when, it, when the fluke is horizontal, or nearly so, it's not going to go any deeper. If the seabed lacks the heaviness or the co consistency to stop the motion, then the anchor will just continue to drag forever. It may not come up, may not go down, again, might just stable drag. In that situation, maybe the turned up flukes would be better, because that would act to block the motion might get a higher holding power in that case. That might be the case for a seabed like loose sand. L loose sand is much more like a liquid. There's not nearly as much cohesion. Uh, maybe we want the anchor to dive down and block seabed from motion from moving. Again, the I don't, I don't want to second guess the designers of this anchor. They had this turned up for a reason, and in the seabeds where they developed this anchor, maybe, maybe that was better. Maybe they tried it like this. Maybe they tried it with them turned down. But again, I'm not going to second guess it. They had their reasons for doing this. I have no communication with those people. I have no idea what their rationale was. I can only say that in the seabeds that I tested, this worked. Now, do I recommend other people do this? Um, and the answer is no. Uh, you're you're going to be completely on your own. I'm not saying drill holes in your anchor. I'm not saying to pound out your flukes flat. We, I may have weakened the anchor, and I may have made the anchor be have less holding power in some seabeds. I have no way of verifying it. So if you guys want to be a scientist, go for it. Drill holes, pound it out, and by all means, tell me what happens. I'd love to have the information. I may have weakened the toe of the anchor with the holes. Um, also, this grind that I had to make before the flukes could be turned down, that actually weakened the fluke as well. It's, in my, to my eye, it's not a huge structural thing, but there's no question that I changed the structure of the entire fluke make me more have more of a tendency to sort of unfold. Let's talk about that shackle jam that we saw in that cobblestone footage. Uh, we can see here that an appropriately sized shackle, 7 sixteenths, uh, will fit through the slot, and that's good. Unfortunately, it's not enough 
clearance. And in situations like this, the shackle jams. You just can't get it to go. I don't care what you do. Um, as we saw in that cobbled footage, the shackle is jammed like this, putting the chain attach point effectively another inch or more to that direction. Co coincidentally, that's also the same direction that the shank itself is deflected about an inch. So all told, I say that that, sh that chain attach point was a good two inches deflected from the center line of the fluke. And what effect that has, very, very difficult to tell. We did see, though, that the anchor was not working quite as well until it jiggled enough to get straightened out. So with Panope here in the shed for the winter, in-water testing of the larger anchors is going to come to a grinding halt. I do still have access to the fishing boat, so I can still keep doing small testing, and I do hope to get out to the ocean beach for a hard sand uh, beach test with a truck at some point. Uh, speaking of small anchors, I did just pick up a new specimen. This is an 11 pound stainless steel North Hill. These are real clever. If you're not familiar with them, uh, they just fold and unfold in a jiffy. Very interesting interlocking design. It's all real positive. And once it's clicked in, that's it. They, they unfold without tools, just lift up on this. And away it goes. Notice that they've welded a piece of sharpened rod into the fluke. It's very strong, very sharp, and when they're in the setting position, this is just pointing straight down just perfectly for penetrating weeds, perhaps other hard seabeds. Great anchors, they do have the problem of the lazy fluke often sticking up out of the seabed. It means that your rope can wrap around easily during wind shifts, and at that point the anchor will be useless. If it wasn't for that flaw, boy, these anchors might just replace all the others. So I'll keep making anchor videos, and by all means, you guys keep sending me dough via my Patreon or PayPal links. You'll find those in the description below. All right, that's all I got. As always, anchor safely. So long.